Yes. Dylan Lewis, what do you check in a pod of New Stitch Media? How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? I am well, thank okay. you. So just a couple of quick questions. What were your favorite positive moments from last year? What mm -hmm. are the traditions you've started implementing with as a team? Yeah. And what is the best piece of advice Dean Smith ever gave you? Well, I mean, the positive moments was being able to work with young kids. I mean, that's just... I say this all the time, it's a blessing and an honor to be able to do it. And so, um, you know, the every day on the court and off the court to be in the lives of those kids last year um, is something that I will remember and cherish for the rest of my life. Uh, in terms of Coach Smith and what he has taught me, I mean, we don't have enough time for me to, <laughs> to go through all the things and the lessons he continues to teach. Right. Um, one of the things that, uh, that that quickly stands out is, you know, giving people an opportunity and a chance. You know, so many people think that because I played at North Carolina, I was a high school McDonald's All-American and highly recruited, and I wasn't. I had only two scholarship offers going into my senior year, and that was at George Mason and George Washington. And I basically begged to go to Carolina because I wanted to be a part of the program and a part of the team and be coached by Coach Smith. And, uh, and I wanted to get my degree there. And so, you know, he gave a, a, not a highly recruited recruit a chance and an opportunity. And because of that, not only did I got to go to school there and play there, but it's where my wife and I got married and raised our kids there. And now I'm the head coach here. And that's because of Coach Smith. That's awesome. Coach, you have so many veterans, but also a lot of new faces. Yeah. How much do you lean on the veterans to get that group up to speed before the season? I do lean on them, but it, I'm the head coach. It's my job to get everybody on the same page. And so, um, you're right. We have you know seven new players, and you know five transfers, and two freshmen, and along with seven um, returners. And um, you know that's what you know the summer is used for. I, if the only interaction I'm having with these guys is on the court, then then I'm not doing my job. And so, I require the guys to stop by the office at least one time a week. But I. One of the things that we always say as a staff is you got to touch our guys. And so I, I'm texting, calling, going down, I mean, having breakfast, lunch, dinner with them all the time, trying to develop those relationships because I always feel like you can't play for me unless you know me and I can't coach you unless I know you. And so the only way I know how to do that is not the text and the tweet and the TikTok, it's actually talk in person. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think there's, I mean, I think there's a number of reasons why we didn't reach our full potential last year. I mean, you can go from a basketball standpoint of, you know, our inability to shoot the basketball, and uh, we weren't a very good passing team. We were 14th out of 15 teams in terms of team assists. Um, the discipline and the details towards the stretch, you know, we. Of the 13 losses we had last year, nine of them, it was a one possession game. And so that's a rebound here, a free throw there, a box out there. Um, but also I think, you know, and I've said this before, you know, you know, handling is the first time that they had to handle noise from praise and prosperity. And that's the hardest one to manage and to deal with because you lose sight and you take your foot off the gas pedal in terms of what has actually put you in a position to be up one with a minute and 25 to go in the national championship. And when you do that, that's where the discipline and the details and those things are sacrificed. And so when RJ talks about grit, um, my guess is he's talking about that in terms of understanding the hard work in your preparation, in your play, that actually allows you to put you in a position to be able to experience the things that we experienced two years ago. If I could follow up, last year uh, here we were talking about who was going to shoot the ball. Obviously, came into last yeah. year and yeah. really didn't work out that well. No. We obviously put emphasis on the ball getting shooters. <laughs> <laughs> we were last in ACC. It did not work out. <laughs> getting shooters. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want shooters. We don't need shooters. We need we we need makers. You know, there's a difference between FGAs and FGMs. Okay, and so, uh, and I also think, I, I also think there's a, there's a, th there is, there is a link between shooting percentages and our lack of team assists. And so, sharing the basketball, getting the ball to move, you know, 
having everybody get a chance to touch it, I think is a real big emphasis for us. And um, But uh, I'm interested in FGMs, not FGAs. Do you feel like Coach, you have enough makers now? I do. I feel like we have enough makers. Um, but I, 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 I like to transition to feeling like we have enough makers to knowing we have makers. Right. Is it particularly frustrating among those double odds, especially yeah. the second half of the season? Yeah, a lot. And his, and his numbers reflect that yeah. as well. And do you have the composition now on the roster and what you'll have on the floor that will limit the, uh, the amount of times other teams can double him because there's more options? I do. I, you know, I, I believe that. Um, I think, you know, statistically, Armando's best year was his junior year, and you know, we shot the ball really well. You know, everyone talks about spacing, and you can, you can have every guy in, you know, the corner, corner, and all the way at half court. But if you don't have guys that are legitimate threats, it's just not going to be able to give Armando that type of space. And um, as gifted and as talented and as accomplished as he's been throughout his career. He has been at his best when he's had space. And so that's a huge emphasis on us for us to be able to get everything we can get from him is that we've got guys that can give him that space out there on the floor. If I can ask a follow up on Armando, I saw him last month. I remember the first thing I noticed how he's tripping. No, he looks. He, everything. No. Well, it's face. It's, it's, I don't know what he's doing. It's not connecting, so I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> that, but it's fine. But, uh, he said that he's noticed a difference. What difference have you noticed with him being a trimmer? Um, I, I, I've noticed that um, there's a sense of urgency of um, this is the last run. This is it. And um, how does he want to leave this place? You know, he's experienced the highs of highs here and the lowest of lows. He's gone through a pandemic here. Like, how do you want to leave this place? You know, do you want your number in the rafters? How do you want to leave this place in terms of team? You know, and uh, I think he sees it. And uh, he wants to make sure that he leaves in the right way. Coach RJ has talked a lot about, you know, the close games and, and grit and defense um, and how there's an emphasis on, you know, those games were last year, like the Miami game, the NC State game, where you just couldn't get a stop late yeah. or you're not making shots and couldn't get a stop. You know, how, how, how do you think that's going to be different with this group this season? Well, my hope is it, 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 it's different from the standpoint of, you know, those discipline and details are not just towards the end of the game. They're, they're consistently throughout the entire game, you know, and it is, you know, I, I, I look back at all of the losses and just went through the last two to three minutes and it literally was a rebound here, a shot here, a free throw here that easily could have turned into four or five more wins and it's and uh, sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way um, but you got to make it bounce your way uh, by the energy and the effort and the attention to detail and I feel like we have a group that that values those things uh, every day and consistently practices that so that in the game it can it can translate the game up in your story from in there, what, what did you think of Armando at that 15U tournament? Like, what did you go back and report to Coach Williams after the fact? I did. I told Coach Williams, I said, I know, you know, this is real early, but there's a kid in Richmond that's pretty good, you know, and I, and I said, let's just keep an eye on him. So we had a number of unofficial visits for him to come up and got to meet um, his parents. And uh, I just, you know, Instead of going other places, I went to Richmond a lot. Because okay? <laughs> so, I did, I felt like he was a type of uh, uh, type of big that um, historically that Carolina has always wanted a guy that can rebound and finish around the basket and protect the basket. And so um, I'm glad that my trip to New York was canceled, and somehow I ended up in Richmond, Virginia, and uh, got to see Armando when he was 15 years old. Hey, was you gone through the process as a recruit and an assistant now head coach of the recruiting side of things? How have you seen the process change in your NIL? <laughs> 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 oh, no changes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, since I've become head coach, you know, college is uh, basketball has, has flipped 180. I mean, it's um, obviously the transfer portal has exploded, uh, you know, which still doesn't get 
uh, you know, a lot of headlines is, you know, the extra COVID year. We still got one more year left, and the impact. We had Leaky for five years. I mean, just the impact we got. We got Brady Manning. Just the impact that it's had on teams and programs. Um, you know, you talked about the explosion of NIL and the involvement of agents, and that's all coming off of a pandemic. <coughs> So people don't talk about that as well. And so it, it, it's been a lot, and, but this is a part of college basketball. The transfer portal is real, it's free agency, and it's a, a great way to be able to um, add experienced players on your team and uh, develop them from a different direction. And what so, adjustments have you had to make within the process yourself in the recruitment? Well, you do. I mean, you, you know, it's, I've had to adjust completely. I mean, it, you know, I, one of the things that I'm, I'm not fearful of, I, you know, is, are there going to be any more Armandos or RJs? You know, are there going to be any more senior night moments? And I don't know. If they're good enough, they're going to the NBA. If they're not good enough, they're going to transfer. You know, I just, those are special moments to me at Carolina that I don't want to go away. And so um, I think you always have to tweak, pivot, alter, and change. And I've had to be able to do that over the last three years. Coach, what do you say to the high schoolers who maybe feel like they've lost hope in terms of playing at the next level due to the portal? Because there's some kids out there that just, you know, it's just discouraging for them. What do you say to those high school players maybe that are, you know, looking to make that next step? Well, I, I don't think it should be discouraging. I, th I think it should be uh, um motivating I think it should be motivating that there's competition coming from a different direction now there's there's a transfer portal and understanding the value and appreciation of being able to get a, a full scholarship that you can play a game that you love and you can get a free education at an institution that you love and so I think it should heighten the motivation and awareness of what a gift it is to be a student athlete at whatever institution that you're at you talked about how Teams are now older, and their team in particular is yeah. older. Um, but how much does that experience help guys coming like Elliot and, and, and the other freshmen to adjust a little bit more because they've got so many older guys around? I think that's huge. I think you have to have it. I think you have to have uh, legacy guys like RJ and, and Armando, and you have to have older guys like uh, Cormac and Pax and, and Harrison that have been there before and they've done it at a high level. And, um, Having that type of example around Elliot Cadeau and Zayden High, and uh, even even uh, young players like Seth Trimble and also Jalen Washington is huge. I like diversity. Uh, you know, I don't want a team of full of you know incoming freshmen, and I don't want a team of full of transfers. I I, I like a combination of, of a number of different things, and you know, that's one of the things that I really like about this team. You mentioned Jalen. How much more prepared is he now physically, and how much better do you see him being because he's now a year more removed from surgery? He's got a chance to play in some games. And yeah. Well, this is the first summer in three and a half years that he's been able to train, not rehab. That's a huge difference. There's a huge difference between rehabbing and actually individual workouts and training. So this is the first time he's had a chance to do that. And so. Um, I'm excited to see his growth out there on the floor. Coach, how's, Ed, how's Elliot done in terms of learning the system and, and getting a feel for what you want of him? And, and does he have a chance to be your starter? Well, uh, Elliot's been great for us. He's, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful that he's with us right now. He's, he's, he's unique. Um, I've only seen in college somebody like him, similar, has been Kendall Marshall in terms of his ability not only to pass, but to get it to his teammate, like in in the perfect position to be able to do something on the offensive end, um, he brings a, a unique and special gift from the standpoint of like he actually celebrates more passing the ball than he does scoring, and that's really rare in college now uh, or in basketball in general is is that type of unselfishness and, and teamwork, and so uh, I'm glad he's here and um, we need him to be really good this year. Coach, I know that it's. Uh, Early still, and still trying to figure out what you have yeah. in place. Mm -hmm. um, 
this is a program that has primarily predicated a lot of its success on its rebounding, specifically yeah. offensive end, and getting out in transition. Yeah. So how do you feel in terms of the team that you have on getting back to that? Yeah, I, I do. You know, the, um, from an offensive standpoint, uh, every day, all day, every second, we talk about pace. And um, I want to be the fastest team that we could possibly be in the country from free throw line to free throw line. And then once we get into our sets, we run it with purpose and pace. And that's the way that I like to play. And that's the way that we're going to play this year. And you're right, rebounding is the foundation of, of, of our program. And it's like that every year. You know, I tell the guys there's three areas that you got to check the box in. You got to rebound, you got to be a good defensive team, and you got to take care of the basketball. And if you check those three boxes, you'll be in every game. And uh, every time that we have done one, all three of those in the two years, we're undefeated. Every time in the last two years, we've done two out of the three. Any sequence, we're 30 and four. So there's success in getting after it, defensively rebounding and taking care of the basketball. And when we were here on last year, um, I was kind of asking you about uh, where do you feel like your team, you know, really needs to be or what areas to improve on. Um, you said, you know, we, we're hungry, but I need us to be starved. Yeah. And we're not at that point. Yet. Yeah, we, we weren't starving. Um, I, I do, I do, but um, we'll find out soon. <laughs> We'll find out soon. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Go back to Elliot real quick. How much do you see him and RJ potentially sharing the court together? Obviously, RJ has you know, kind of the experience that he does. You mentioned you know, his passing ability. How much do you kind of see them being able to share the court together? Well, I mean, you got to have five players out there, so there'll be five players at all times sharing the court out there. And, and, and one of the things that I love to have is as many playmakers out there on, on the floor as possible. I just do. I, I, I like guys that can create shots for their teammates um, within the offense and when, you know, outside of our offense when it doesn't generate a, a good shot for us. So, you know, with RJ and, and Elliot out there on the floor, with Seth, with Harrison, uh, we've got a number of playmakers that uh, work really well together out there on the floor at the same time. What do you think the key is going to be, if at all, for Cadell to kind of manage the, you know, his, his shot? Taking ability, obviously, we saw his live action use, aggressive with his shot, and also just kind of being the stepping back and being the facilitator at times. Do you think there's a balance there at all? Uh, I think there's a balance, but there, it's, you know, I don't think it's an issue or a problem at all for him. He's a basketball player, but it's not just him. You know, Zayden High is a freshman who played, is, is playing extremely well. And it, um, I've been very pleased with him in terms of his versatility and toughness and rebounding and uh, um, defense on both uh, defense. And so um, um, I'm happy with, the, with both freshmen. Going back to Brad's question about Armando, you really saw <clears throat> From the start, <laughs> from the start, yeah, from the start. Yeah. And, and how has it been watching him grow and mature as he has, but yeah. also maintain that sense of humor, that personality? Sometimes that stuff gets jaded when guys are in the spotlight. No, not him. The, Armando's been Armando. He's always been that um, uh, quick wit, you know, uh, sarcastic. Uh, you know, a lot of people ask, you know, who's the biggest talker on our team? Vocally, you can hear it's Harrison Ingram. I mean, him and Zayden, uh, they can go, they can talk, but probably number one is Armando. It's just that behind the scenes, sly, um, 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 sarcastic personality, which I love. Um, but I think, I think the growth for him has really grown from last year to this year. I just, that's probably making people laugh. Well, he can hold a crowd. I want him to hold a crowd on the floor. That's what I want him to do. I want this to be his best year. When it, when it comes to Armando, though, the player, he told us over there at the other table that it, one of his goals this year for himself is to get his jersey up in the rafter. Yeah. As a head coach, when you hear one of your best players talking like that about himself, is that a good thing for the rest of the team because he could be the guy that is kind of up front holding the torch for No, that, that, that's a good thing. I want our guys to have individual success. If they're really good individually, that means we're really good as a team. Yeah.
So for Armando to get his number or RJ to get their number in the Raptors, that means they had a good season. And that's, yay, that's good news for us. And so that's what I want. But that, that can also be kind of infectious to spread to everybody to kind of put that desire and drive into them. Too. I think it can, but I also think individually you have to have an, a, a, you know, an individual eternal drive to be the best that you can be. And so it's great to have the type of leadership that, that Armando has and the determination and, and motivation to be able to do that but everybody's got to pull their weight and be just as motivated as well. Hubert, have you thought about how special it is that two guys here that have stayed, you know, we might not see this again, like guys stay in one school four or five years, it's just kind of rare. It is rare and it's, um, I don't know if the word scares, it scares me is right, but I, it, I don't want that to end. You know, to, that, to say that I've known Armando since 15 years old and I've known RJ since he was 17, that's like a really cool deal. You know, like I, we're going to be in each other's lives for the rest of our life because of the experiences and the relationship that we've built over these four or five years. And so I like relationships, you know, and I, I don't want that to ever end. Do you feel like a combined, like, Obviously, last year didn't go the way you guys wanted. Yeah. Two years ago, you got the heroes. So, like, yeah. kind of a almost an obligation to help them send them out the right way. Yeah, it is. I, yeah. I do want them to send them out the right way. Um, they deserve it. Um, but it comes with a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, a lot of discipline, understanding what's important and what's not, a lot of focus and. My hope is, is that this group is is in that spot to be able to do something special again this year. You, you had mentioned how Armando, you get the sense of talking to him, is thinking about legacy and leaving this place better than he found it. I know it's unfinished still, but at this point, how would you evaluate his legacy and what he means to the history of North Carolina basketball? I, I think as much as he can, he, he understands it. You know, it's, it's really interesting, like, I didn't. Re I I thought I got it, and I really didn't get it. Get it until after I left. I don't want him. I don't think he'll really get it. Get it until he leaves. Um, but he has it right now, and, uh, and he knows the significance of this place and and where he stands, and where he wants to stand after this season. Programs have their ups and downs. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, you know, there's nothing to maintain. It, it never, I mean, it stays there every year. I mean, you have two um, nationally prominent programs literally sharing the same community. Um, I live in Durham County. <laughs> and I think Coach Shire, John, lives in, in Orange County, which is Chapel Hill. <laughs> and so, um, and to have two programs that every year have a legitimate chance of, winning the ACC regular season tournament title and getting to the Final Four winning a national championship. There's no other um, combination of that in the country, and, and that's why I, I feel like you said it's not only something that uh, sets us apart in this conference, but also in the country as well. Have you reconsidered how you use the bench? Uh, you know, have you thought about that? I, I know Armando said you know, the players decide how much they get to play. They do. But have you had to think about it differently and say maybe you do need to leave those guys out there a little bit longer earlier in the year or things like that? Well, I, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll say this. Um, it, is, it, it is the player's job in terms of their preparation, practice, and play to put themselves in a position to play out there on the floor. I have, uh, in the, all the years that I, I've played and as coach, I've never been around a coach, I've never played for a coach, and I've never been a coach that wants to keep somebody on the bench that's gonna help them win. I just, I've never experienced that before. And so, um, in terms of my like rotation philosophy, I don't have one. I don't have one from the standpoint of, I only like to play eight guys, or I have a rotation of nine, or five, or six. I don't have that. I, 
you know, in terms of I put the guys out there that in terms of preparation, practice, and play have put themselves in a position to play. And so this year you, you can see 11 guys playing. That's not my philosophy. My philosophy is I want to win. <laughs> on media day, you were talking about how you set the players down, I guess, this year. I guess spelled out their roles for them as opposed to maybe get their wish. No, I, no, no I, I've, I've always sat down with the roles, but last year I gave them, and I said, you know, put together, I want, I, I gave them ownership in terms of what, what do you want this team to look like. This year I didn't do that. Um, I told them this is what this team is going to look like. And I told them what this team is going to look like offensively and defensively. And either you're on the bus or off the bus. Plain and simple, period, the end. You had a lot of Coach Smith on it. Huh? I had a lot of Coach Smith on it. Um, did that with his team. Well, you know, that's the way we're doing it now. And that's the way we're doing it forever. <laughs> is that a reflection last year? Like, did you change that because of what happened last year? Or, or did you get away from something? No, I, I felt like this was what's needed, and I like it, and it's here to stay. <laughs> um, the experience of being able to play against an unbelievable, um, talented um, team in, in, in Florida Atlantic, a team that was a shot away from playing for the national championship, and has all of their key players coming back this year. So having an opportunity to, to compete against uh, Coach May, he's a terrific coach, and, uh, and their program was a huge benefit for us in seeing where we are and, and how we need to improve. I was really happy. I was really encouraged with the entire team. I told them I was encouraged um, uh, because I, I, I was encouraged by their play. But I was also was encouraged by how much growth, how much, how much better we can get, and so I say I, I walked away from it encouraged. What does this life on the on the bubble do to a coach and a team? Um, it's a non-factor to me. I, I I'm I'm coaching the team. Um, you know that, that that noise doesn't get in for me. I mean, I, I I'm not on my phone. I'm, I don't watch TV. I don't whatever. My focus, and my job is to prepare this team to be the best that they can be. Uh, anything outside of that, you know, and I tell the players, noise is something that doesn't make them a better basketball player, a better teammate, or a better person. Okay, and so if it doesn't make you be those three things, and that's noise, and that needs to keep you away, you need to stay away from that. Well listening to other stuff how is that going to help me do my job and so it's it is it doesn't bother me at all <laughs> when you first watched Zayden High play whether it was on tape or in person what did you see in his game Zayden Zayden yeah yeah well I mean he's he's a big that can uh, really shoot the basketball he loves to compete um since coming to us um I didn't know what a what a really good passer he is he's 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 like He's not a freshman. He's like almost like a junior, like in terms of just, you know, being in the right spots defensively, understanding concepts, being able to retain and listen information and be able to apply it out there on the floor. He's He's been very impressive. On the macro level, how good Well, the goals every year at Carolina are always the same. It just never changes. I mean, our... I mean, there's a number of things that we want our, our team to become the best they can possibly be. And our hope is is that that helps us win the ACC regular season, tournament title, get to a Final Four, win a national championship. So those goals have, were there when I was here at Carolina, and when I was here as an assistant coach, and now as a head coach. And so um, now it's time to get to work and, and uh, put ourselves in a position to possibly be able to do those things. On the macro level, you mentioned how the Duke Carolina rivalry is a bit of an eternal flame, but this year there's kind of an additional component of Armando and Filipowski, two preseason All Americans. Kind of what's your assessment of them as counterparts? Well, they're, I mean, they're both talented and accomplished players, um, very talented players, very different players. Uh, so, from that standpoint, um, I think there's a comparison in terms of, you know, talent being at premier programs. But, you know, one of the great things about Carolina and Duke is it's not about Armando. It's not about um, um, 
Filipowski. It's it's about North Carolina. It's about Duke. Um, there's a number of unbelievable talented players on both institutions, both teams, and that's what makes this rivalry so special. Yeah. I'm not in a position to comment on that. Um, I'm very honored to be a part of the ACC, whether it's um, was when it when when I was in school when it was a three day event and we all played each other twice compared to now having Stanford and Cal and SMU. I just always have believed the ACC is the best conference in, in college basketball and whatever the format is, it's 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 something that I cherish and excited to be a part of. Apologies if you've already been asked this but I was already asked. Oh I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I was like, really? I'm just playing no, with you. I'm just playing. Okay, come on, man. Okay. <laughs> so the, the players were talking about a specific moment that Cormac like punted a basketball in practice. Do you remember your reaction to that, or were you there for that? No, I punted a basketball. Okay. Not this year yet. Not this. Okay, that's Not good. This year. Not this year. Okay. Not this year yet. He punt? No, he kicked the uh, he kicked the water um, stand. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what he did. He okay. got kneed in the thigh and he got upset and he kicked the water stand. What did you talk to him about after that? Did you speak to him after that? No, just let him cool I like that. Off. Just let him cool yeah. off. I like that emotion. Yeah. Okay. He, he kicked it and then two seconds later he came back on the floor and knocked down the three. So <laughs> it is what it is. That's his personality and I love it. Yeah. What is your philosophy on that? schedule because what you put together this season looks yeah. ambitious to say the least. Yeah. Well I mean I, our off you know non conference season has always been challenging. I mean last year gosh who did we play? I mean we played Alabama, we played Iowa State. Um, last one we're gonna let Miami get in here. Gosh, we went to Indiana uh, we played Michigan and Ohio State, so I mean it's the same thing, it's just different opponents. And so, you know, we're in the ACC, um, SEC challenge. We're, we're in the Bahamas tournament, so you don't know who you can play. And play UConn. Yeah, we play UConn in Madison Square Garden, and then we play Oklahoma Over here, here and play Tennessee. We're in the SEC challenge, and so it is what it is. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Get in here yeah. now. Okay. Thanks, coach. Thanks, coach. Yeah. It's good.